Hello everyone, uh, this is Klaus Aranya for the University of Tsukuba and this is topic 8 of the experiment design for computer science. Uh, today we're going to talk about multiple comparisons, uh, especially ANOVA and post hoc testing. Uh, now, uh, in this first video I will actually do some housekeeping regarding the course. So as you know, last week we did not, uh, I did not uh, publish the lecture video, I canceled the lecture. So we're going to have a small change in the schedule. Also there was an extension for grades report, so I will also talk about that. And I will talk a little bit about like, uh, what is the third report and how we're going to do grading. and. Um, uh, some interesting, uh, insightful uh, topics that I saw on social media this week. Uh, if you want to go straight to the lecture topic on Innova and post hoc testing, you might want to skip to the next video, although this one should be should not be a very long one. Okay, so um, let's see. So about the new schedule. So last week we did not have the lecture. And at the same time, there was an extension for a grade uh, deadline. Uh, so uh, I will restructure the rest of our lecture as follows. So today we're doing the lecture topic eight, multiple comparisons. Uh, that will be the class in the next video that I will publish all together with this one. Next week, we will talk about the topic that I was going to talk about last week, which is calculation of sample sizes. And these will be the last two topics of the of our course. And then on 627, I will hold a second uh, open, oh, sorry, 627 is a Saturday. So according to the university calendar, we should have lectures on 626, a Friday, and 627, a Saturday. And honestly, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I am going to use the 73 which was supposed to, to be the final examination that we're not going to have anyway. And I will hold an open question session. So instead of having the lecture on Saturday, we're going to have the final lecture on 7.3. And on 7.3, at the regular time, 3, uh, 3 to 6, uh, you can come here. On, I will open a Zoom talk with everyone like I did last time. I will post the details to Manaba. And you can come and ask questions about multiple comparisons. You can ask questions about sample sizes. Uh, you can ask questions about anything else that you want. The last time we did an open question session, it was very popular. Uh, lots of people had interesting questions. You can also ask about your uh, third, uh, the third report. I expect that I will have finished grading the second report. By then, I, I don't promise, sorry. But if I have, you can also ask questions about the second report and the third report. The deadline for submission of the third report is July 20th. So I'm giving you a lot of time, a month, so that you can also finish the report for the other lec uh, lectures. And also, uh, you're gonna have a lot of time to ask me questions. Uh, there were two students who showed me their reports for report two and got feedback on them. And honestly, if you want to do that, I say that's great. Ask me some feedback for your report if you want. I will be happy to give you some feedback. And the grades will should be announced on July 26. And I will give you a little bit of time to ask questions about the grades before they are registered on Twins. Okay? <clears throat> if you have any questions about this, uh, it's better if you ask on Manaba. Okay? All right, the second announcement is about the third report. So the idea is that the third report is like the first and the second one. You have to do an experiment, you have to collect data, you have to analyze that data using the techniques that we're going to discuss in these lectures, and you have to write a report. And you submit that report, the data, the script with your analysis, just like the first two reports. Now, report three, there are two uh, characteristics for report three. Uh, I, uh, different from report one and two, in report three, I want you to use calculations of sample sizes. So until now, we just assumed that we had enough samples, but we did not use any technique to say, okay, I need exact, uh, this, number of, this number of observations to guarantee that my experiment has this much power and this much confidence. 
next lecture, I'm going to be talking exactly about that. And I want you to use some of the techniques in the next lecture to calculate the number of samples for your experiment. Also, um, I want you to use some sort of comparison of multiple samples, which is the topic for this lecture. So you have to think about in your experiment, how can you use multiple samples? And feel free to talk to me about that if you are not very sure, if you want to exchange some ideas. Now about the grading. Originally, I was expecting, uh, before we had Corona and everything, I was expecting that we would have some time after the third report so that I would say, okay, if you want to improve your grade, you can resubmit one of your reports. That was my original plan. But because of the general delay of uh, calendar for this class and for all the other classes, I decided to scrap that plan. So instead of, well, of course, I don't want to, to um, how do you say, to cause a problem to the students. So instead of resubmitting one of the reports as which was my original idea, what I'm gonna do is that for this year, uh, I will grade your two best, so you're submitting three reports, I will grade the best two, okay? So you have report one, two, and three, I will give a grade for the three of them, but your final grade will be the average of your best two reports. So if your best reports are the first one and the second one, I'll take the average of that. If your first report was not very good, but your second, you improved for the second one and you improved for the third one, I'm gonna take the average of that. That said, even though I would take the average of the two reports with the best grades, you still need to submit all three reports. If you don't submit one of the reports, I will not. I will calculate the grade as before. So please submit all the three reports. Okay, do an effort. <clears throat> okay, uh, the third announcement is not related to this course, but it's related to the topics in computational sciences course. So some of you might have seen that in the computational computer science for English uh, um, list of courses, there is this course, Topics in Computational Sciences, which is an intensive course for how to see, for Spring C. Uh, this course is a uh, intensive course that covers several topics. So every year uh, we have different professors coming and giving short talks for this course. And I have finally contacted all the professors and I, ha I, I have asked this course to be registered on Twins. So when you see this video, you should be able to go to Twins and check the course code. And as you can see, the course code is here on the top. It's either uh, 0AL5402 for those of you who enter the, um, enter the program this year and 01CH751 for those of you who are second year master students, okay? We had like a change in codes, as some of you know. Uh, the new code for this course is this. The old code for this course is this. So the idea of this course is that it is a colloquium. Uh, this means that we're gonna have five professors and each professor will talk about one of different topics. So Professor Adam Gentote, from the University of, from Kyoto University, will talk about information access and knowledge extraction from news archives. And that's really interesting. That was a really interesting talk. I saw his talk last year. He was in this course last year too. Professor Stephen Turnbull, that he is here from Tsukuba, but he's from Shako, not from computer science. And he's gonna talk about modeling and especially important in this year now with many different models that are, have been done for the COVID pandemic and what we can learn about those. Uh, Professor Yeshu Kai, she is from the computer science department. She's gonna talk about clustering. So different ways of doing clustering and how you can apply that. Uh, here, there's a typo here, okay. Professor Simona, she is going to give this course the first time for, our, for, for us. And she's gonna talk about test case generation which is very important for all of you who are going to do big, um, <clears throat> uh, big softwares for your ex for your uh, courses for your research, and Professor Bakukumar will talk about bioinformatics, which is how we use computer science to um, find new uh, new data about biology. So, different professors, different research topics. I highly recommend that you do this course to have a broader view 
of what is science. Okay, uh, if you cannot find this course on Twins, uh, let me know, I uh, will check to see, but it should be already available when you see this video. Finally, um, the last two videos, I did not include uh, the research talk, so I decided to do it again for this one. And there were uh, three news I saw on social media this week that reminded me of something that I like to tell the students. And it's a question for you. Have you ever tried to Google your own name? So maybe you want to pause the video and try right now. If you Google your own name, what comes up? So all of you are uh, master students. Uh, you are entering um, the academia. You are entering uh, the world of science. And one thing that I always tell my own st the students that I supervise is that it's important to have to make sure that you control your online presence. What does that mean? That means uh, making your own web page or. Um, <clears throat> Uh, participating in social media in scientific circles, maybe doing videos or doing blogs. So anyway, having an online presence to tell the world, hey, I'm this person and I'm doing this research and I'm really interested about this. Okay, and, and why is that important? Well, um, today uh, a lot of search science goes online. I mean, probably when you look for papers, you're going to look uh, online for papers on your topic and <clears throat> this class right now you're taking it online for those of you uh, who came from outside of the University of Scuba you probably check the Scuba University webpage maybe you check the webpage of the professor who is your supervisor right now I guess so when you choose your professor you looked online and you found the page of your of the laboratory and you think, okay, right now I'm consuming, I'm checking the webpage of the university, I'm checking the webpage of my professor, I'll check the webpage of this course. But as you advance in your professional life or in your academic life, uh, this balance will be from you looking up, looking for information about other people to other people looking for information about you. So maybe someone is looking for a reviewer uh, and they, and you can sh show up on the search as, oh, this is a person that reviews the, that, that, that works on this area. Or maybe uh, there's someone looking for a collaborator. Maybe you, uh, uh, they want to know, oh, I'm looking for someone who studies modeling using deep neural networks. And if that's your topic and you put that on your web page and they search for that keywords, they'll come for you to ask for your opinion on the research. This has happened to me three or four years ago. Uh, there was a research in the UK that was looking for um, black box optimization of modeling and he came across my webpage. He sent me a message and we talked and we not, right now we're doing a collaboration for the last three, four years. Um, <clears throat> you eventually will want, maybe you will gonna want, you want to apply to a grant or a student grant, like a DC grant, or maybe you want to apply for like a grant from a company. And if you have a web page where you have your papers and your research activities and your thoughts uh, people say oh this person actually is doing some work uh, this is what she looks like uh, when she's doing research okay so uh, yeah th there is this opinion that i think it put it very succinctly very similar like um it keeps make a personal research page it gives you an opportunity to introduce yourself as you want to be seen and to frame your publication list and this is important like um, if you even if you don't worry about if you don't <clears throat> make your online presence uh, google will do it for you uh, there are several web crawlers that list uh, people like google scholar for example list people by their research so if you look your name and if you have a kind of unique name and not many people have the same name as you but you don't have a web page if you look, search for google it will probably find your Google Scholar page. And there is a list of papers, but it doesn't say, okay, but what does this person research? What, is, what, are, what are the goals of these scientists? Okay. So, <clears throat> so, okay, so what should you do? Okay, so you think, okay, maybe I need to think about my web presence. What do you do? Is this complicated? Actually, it's not very complicated, okay? Uh, you already, as a computer science student, you have a account 
uh, on the university web server. So if you take a look at the manual for your email, there is also how to update your personal web page somewhere in there. Um, so you can have a web page in the university web page, and, and, and that already gives a lot of credibility. Uh, it gives you a lot of, of credibility for your web page. Um, and it doesn't need a lot of content. I, I was thinking about it, and I mean, a very simple yet effective web page for a master's student in the first year would be add your institution and position. So like, I am, I am X, I am a master's student at Y Lab, and then they make a link for your laboratory at the University of Tsukuba, then you make a link for the University of Tsukuba. Maybe, I don't know, add your, either your picture or maybe a logo that identify yourself that's not super necessary. Uh, maybe some image, like if you're researching neural networks, maybe add an image of a brain bear or something like that. Uh, your research agenda. So what is a research agenda? It's, it's just a small paragraph that says, I am studying X and Y. In the future, I want to make Z happen. And this is important. This X and Y is what you're studying right now. And that will be kind of summarizing the papers that you write, the, the classes that you take. But this is actually more interesting, especially for if you want to, uh, for recruiters. Like, what do you want to do? Why are you studying what you're studying right now? Okay, how do you want to change the world? So that's good. Something that is good to put in your personal web page. And of course, uh, maybe a few research achievements. So if you have some articles, even if it's just local. Um, <clears throat> local presentations, put a list of the things that you do. If you have not published anything yet, but maybe you have some archive publications that you want to put in there, that's fine as well. Or even if you just have like a GitHub account that you write there, just having that may get other people to know, okay, this person writes code from time to time, or maybe uh, you go to some social media, maybe Twitter or Facebook, and you write your opinions. Oh, I think this research is great. Oh, I read this nice paper. It puts you into the conversation, okay? It's important to be part of the conversation. Science is a community. And <clears throat> by putting like this, this position of yourself in the map, uh, your opinions, like I wrote here, your opinions about science are super important. Maybe you are someone who uh, boosts other people. Maybe you are someone who criticizes other people. So having your, having your own, learning to make your own voice is super important, especially if you want to stay in academia, okay? Okay, but we're on a experiment design classes, right? So is this just opinion? Well, Actually, and what motivated me to write this was this paper. There, there was this paper that was uh, announced on, on the so on social media this week. It's Jessica Luck and others. I think there's about eight or seven authors for this paper. This is from the Annals of Thoracic Surgery. So this is a, a medical journal, uh, very uh, published very recently. There is a link here. You can click on the link to read the entire paper. It's not very long. But the idea basically is that they wanted to see what was the influence of social media on the cita citation rate of papers. So the idea is that if you put a paper on social media that was in a journal, how it, well, some people believe that it might get more notice, it might get, might get more attention, might have, get more citations, but in concrete terms, in actual numbers, what is the difference? And that's what they wanted you to do. And they also wanted to do something a little bit more rigorous. So they tried a large number of papers. So they took 112 papers from this journal. So these are all papers from this journal that had not did not did not have yet um, a social media presence. And and this is important. They did they did a random sample. So <clears throat> they got the 112 papers, and in the in the paper in, in this paper they describe how they selected these papers, and they select half of it randomly uh, half of it they would put they, they would announce these papers in a large account with 50,000 followers and the other half they would not do that so they did this for a year for one year every <clears throat> every week sorry every day they would announce one of the papers on the social media account and that happened in 2018 and then the following year 
they measure the number of citations as well as other metrics for the papers that were cited. And the results uh, you can see here, uh, the papers that were tweeted, they had on average three citations in this year, in the year 2018. The papers that were not tweeted, they had on average 0 0.7 citations. Uh, this was, so there are 52 papers in this group and 52 papers in this group. So this was very interesting. <clears throat> uh, a lot of people discussed these results. And this is something that I think for you, okay, you hear about this. What do you think? What's the thing that comes to your mind? There were many people, some people were saying, oh, okay, so this is important. I need to tweet my papers more. Other people should, well, were saying, oh, okay, that means that we should try to reduce the number, the attention because social media does not say how good a paper is. And other people were saying, okay, this shows how important it is to make sure that people who do not have good networks are raised, are like boosted <clears throat> by accounts from journals and societies. So journals and societies are responsible for maybe trying to bring attention to papers because if you are a very famous scientist, you have a, a big follower, you can increase your number of citations just by using your big follower count. But if you don't have a big, if you're a small scientist, maybe you need someone to help you there. Um, so there were many different opinions. So I encourage you to read this paper, uh, also because it has some very nice uh, experiment design. They describe really carefully how they collected the data, how they selected the papers, how they did the analysis, uh, what were the parameters of the experiment. So from that point of view, I also recommend this paper. And also to think about what does it mean? What does it mean that um, social media has such a large influence in the number of citations that papers get? Remember that this was random. It was not like the good papers that were uh, announced. It was randomly. They did not, they did not choose the papers by quality. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'll stop this video. And on the next video, we're gonna start talking about multiple comparisons, the topic for this class. See you there.